Welcome back everyone, I'm Sethiroth, and today we are continuing our deep dive into the Triumvirate Mage Archetypes spell mod. We're going to be going into the Cleric today, and as you can see we are decked out in heavy armor with our trusty mace, because some of the Cleric spells are actually designed for one-handed combat. Now if you want to run this as a Paladin build that goes in with heavy armor, or if you want to be a more of a spellcaster type, there are still obviously spells that work along those lines, but in order to show off everything, I've decided to go with a heavy armor, one-handed build. We're going to bring along trusty Indigo, a very friendly little Khajiit follower. I've been trying to figure out how to do a demo for him, but he's so... It, it, he's he has little bits of inspiration that are sprinkled throughout a playthrough. It's very hard to catch them all without like recording an entire playthrough, and I don't have that much time yet. Anyway, back to the conversation at hand. We're going to start off with the Restoration Spells. The Cleric Restoration Spells, that is the wrong menu for that. Okay, Restoration. The first one can actually be found in Markarth. That will be in possession of the NPC known as Hamel. Hamel in Markarth. And then we have uh, Maramal in Riften, all the way on the other side of the map. And then Rorland in Solitude, way up in Solitude, and last but not least, Runil in Falkreath. All we have vendors at every one of these holds and cities. If you want to buy the following restoration spells, I don't know why the northeast corner of Skyrim got left out. <laughs> Clearly, this is actually one of the few uh, spells that have four vendors. Most of them have three, but this one has four. I guess because restoration is such a necessity, especially in an environment where the undead can like crawl out of their tombs and come find you. <laughs> I guess it makes sense for those spells to be uh, slightly more common. So that said, we're gonna dive into, first off, aid. Aid is a very simple upgrade. It's just uh, cast and unleash. Yeah, there we go. All right, so living or undead ally gets 30 bonus points to all skill levels while you concentrate. There we go. So you've got the divine aura as you are concentrating. So while I'm maintaining this, every one of Inigo's spells goes up by 30 points, which, as you can imagine, is going to give him a lot more damage, a lot more armor, and if you were a spellcaster, obviously better oh, everything, actually. So that works for a specific ally that you are focusing on. So this is not a crowd buff. This is you have your one tank that is going in and you're amping them up as much as you possibly can. And there's really no point taking it into combat because let's face it, Inigo is already really good. So <laughs> uh, he'll be one shotting them anyway. All right, next is Aura of Might. Caster and living or undead allies. So this will hit all of your allies deal 40% more attack damage while you concentrate. When you release the spell, it'll unleash 20 fire damage and 20 sun damage. So as you can see, it takes a little longer to concentrate and then everyone gets uh, increased attack damage. And when you release, boom, divine energy. So we're gonna dive in and yeah, ignore the uh, spirit guardian. That's actually, it's coming. <laughs> That's another spell. I ordered her to wait so that she wouldn't interfere with the playthrough. Uh, but she's coming. Oh, well, just not, okay. Oh, well, apparently this one disregards my orders to wait while while my follower that I told to come with me stays. Okay, whatever. Going in. So, while I'm holding this down, I get 40% more attack damage. When I release it, things go boom. So, we've actually got another undead over here. It's hiding. And... Boom! There we go. Fire and sun damage. Which, if you recall, sun damage is particularly effective against undead. Especially if you're running certain vampire mods. And there we go. So a lot of the cleric restoration spells function like this. They maintain concentration for one effect. And then when you release it, they have another. So this kind of allows you to combo different effects based on where you are time-wise with tactics and stuff. Rather than throwing out one spell and it does the same thing all the time. Now, next we have Aura of Vigor. Uh, when you cast this, your party, in essence, uh, you and your allies, heal for 15 points per second, release for 2 seconds of invulnerability. 
So if we maintain concentration, boom, everyone's going to get 15 points of health. And you know, and then, okay, well actually, okay, so this is showing off Aura of Vigor in, in combat. This is going to give us 15 points of healing per second. Let's maintain. Yep, there we go. That's actually a pretty decent speed of regeneration. And then you get it nice and close. Now, you will notice that when I release this effect, it affects me and my party. So if you're running multiple followers, if you've got multiple undead backing you up, multiple allies, they all benefit, and that fire holy nuke hits them all. Very nice. And I've been trying to find... Uh, areas out in the open to do these demos and it's hard to find one that does all undead but when you have followers they, they die really fast and then you've got to reload at the same time i want to show off all the undead stuff and the party healing stuff and all that requires an actual party all right anyway moving on to aura of thorns all right so with aura of thorns you and your party will get reflect 50 fire and sun damage in melee. So we're going to have to find a skeleton here that wants to take things to the personal level. Up oh, there we go. And down they go. So, oh, wow, that's a lot of ouchie. Okay, so that gives you... Alright, so it's a thorn spell. When they hit you, they take fire damage and sun damage. When you release, you heal for 100 points of health. So I like this one because not, it gives you your offensive, right? You're doing damage for as long as your magicka stays up. Let's get in nice and close here. Watch this at work. Come on, hit me, bro. There we go. And, and all of my friends will hit you, too. And run release to heal. There you go. So I do like that, again, the, these spells have their multi-purpose, which is really nice, particularly if you are using a controller. I always plug my controller into my PC because I've played too much PlayStation and it just feels more natural to me. But I like that having one spell fulfill multiple roles because with my controller, I can only have like three abilities and, and or spells at one time. So it's really nice to be able to multiply like that. Next, we're going to show off Mass Immortality. This is the last of the restoration spells. As you can see, this is actually a master spell. It's just guy. It only does one thing. But if we can get close enough to start a fight before my allies come in and finish it. Uh, all right, so this lasts for 30 seconds. We got 30 seconds to go in and get shot at. It's called mass immortality, but give me a second to show you what it actually does. Come on, bring it, bros. Alrighty, it does unlimited regeneration for 30 seconds. As you can tell, the regeneration is a lot slower than what we had with uh, Aura of Vigor. But at the same time, I mean, it's 30 seconds of, well, enhanced regeneration. You know? Can't really argue with that. I do wonder, I actually, let's check. We'll look at the description. I want to see if it lasts, nope, nope, still only lasts 30 seconds. So you have to use some kind of perks or potions to make that last longer. Hurt me, please! I need to... Oh, okay, this one... This draugr has got a lightning cloak, and apparently their lightning cloak does more... Hurts more than my regeneration helps. So, I do like this consistent regeneration that it just is passive. Once you cast the spell, you've got it for 30 seconds. It seems a little low, but I wonder if you were running, say, mod... Or, not mods, but enchantments on your armor that boost your Magicka regen, if those would stack with the regen you get from Mass Immortality, and that might make it look a lot more impressive than uh, what we've got. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to the next set of spells. All right, next we are doing the destruction spells. So we're going to go ahead and go over the vendors first. First off, over in Dawnguard with the destruction spells. Most of these, by the way, specifically focus against undead. Uh, we have Florentius Bainius. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, in Dawnguard. And then over in Solitude with Rorland. And Runil and Falkreath, you will be able to purchase these destruction-based cleric spells. Uh, I do like the idea of putting a lot of these out of Falkreath because that is the, the, the biggest graveyard, I believe, in Skyrim. A lot of their fallen heroes are stored there. 
And then Dawnstar has their own problems with hauntings and stuff, so it makes sense that also that they would have some speci specifically undead-esque stuff. Oh, anti-undead. You get what I'm saying. I haven't tried these in a Dawnguard playthrough, but I think it would be really interesting to see how well they would fare, particularly if you've overhauled your vampires to make them really tough. That being said, we're going to dive into the spells now. We're going to set aside my uh, glorious mace and switch to Solar Ray. This is your novice level destruction spell. It deals six points of fire and six points of sun damage per second. Man, I am not used to being this slow and heavy armor. All right, light them up. Oh, wow, that they were not kidding about the ray part. That's kind of cool. Like, I have a laser. Woo! <laughs> Laser pointer, very nice. You are the one! Oh jeez, yeah, this is a novice level spell, so anything else is gonna be... I think this is gonna hurt my... Yep, 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 hurts your allies. I just bear, just clarified, it hurts your allies. It's not just an undead spell. I'm sorry! Uh, okay, so that's a fun one. Uh, so that will be your novice level spell. Concentration based, kind of like flames, but it also adds in sun damage. It technically does a little more damage than your regular Flames spell. Yeah, because Flames is 10, and when you combine... Oh, my Solar Ray is 7 points of Fire and Sun. So that's mine is doing 14 total damage. Flames is 10. It's a little better. But depending on the undead mods that you are running, you will actually... Some of them will take twice as much damage from Sun damage. So uh, your Destruction spells then will have a little more punch. All right, okay, so next we are going to actually need that mace. I discarded it too early. Oh, I want my, yeah, dwarven mace. There we go. That'll work. All right, so next is called Holy Fire. All right, Holy Fire. Enchant your power attacks for 60 seconds to deal 10 fire and sun damage. So this is actually empowering my one-handed attacks for 60 seconds. It's a buff. You could actually combine this with Akatao's Recital so that you auto-cast this when you enter combat and then you will do extra fire and sun damage on melee hits. And they, yeah, I mean, they're skeletons, so they don't uh, they don't take long. But uh, usually this Draugr here is tougher, so this will give us more of a demonstration. There we go. I guess my one-handed could be better. Ah, all right, this is where we're gonna whip out that aura of vigor. Give me healing and not give me death. There we go. Wow, that is so much faster than Mass Immortality. But it does require, you know, concentration. So, I guess that's a good balance, I suppose. Alright, next. Man, I wish this spot was bigger, like with more undead, so I could use multiple spells without having to reload. But it does give me Draugr and Skellies, and we're already halfway through destruction anyway. So, on to Consecrated Ground. Okay, this is one that you will actually cast in combat. Or... Yeah, during combat. This sanctifies the battlefield, dealing 6 fire and 6 sun damage for 30 seconds. Alright, I'm going to try again to tell these people to just wait. Okay, you're going to wait. And you're going to wait. Thank you. Alright, we're basically going to set the ground on fire with holy energy and uh, see what kind of a damage output we can get for this. Boom shakalaka! And they did not wait, but we did see that... Oh, that was kind of cool. I, oh, wow. Ooh. Okay, I'm really liking the... I didn't think I like it this much, but look at the area of effect. Like, that's a cool... Ah, there, in, if you play D&D &D as a cleric, there are actual... There's a spell called Hollow, and you literally sanctify the ground beneath your feet. And this is kind of what I would envision, right? The, the boundaries would be lit with some kind of divine or radiant energy and that clearly but man the blast radius is great like you can hit the whole battlefield with this thing and they all take it okay now we're gonna have to scooch a little closer to make sure we've included uh mr sunshine eyes over here and we're just gonna sit back and uh let our little holy ground chew away at him there we go that is cool and that lasts let me do a check uh, 30 seconds. All right. Oh, that's not bad. You can you can finish most fights in 30 seconds, particularly if you're more of a heavy bruiser type that's going in with heavy armor and power attacks. All right. Let's see what else we got. What do we have next? Holy shock. Oh yeah, this one's gonna be fun. 
All right, so this is another melee type enhancement. This is a buff that lasts for 60 seconds. You will deal 30 shock and 30 sun damage. So your one-handed hits are going to be much, much prettier. Let's watch. Bon chakalaka. I'm playing whack-a-mole here. I'm just going straight to the Draugr at this point. My allies will not stay put. I guess we're seeing a little bit more damage. Not as much as I'd hoped, but at the other, on the other hand, this is a very tough... I'm, I'm running uh, tougher Draugrs, and as you can see, that one's just blasting half my health without too much work. But this is a demo character. This guy doesn't... His armor isn't fully enchanted, for example, so that static damage just chews right through him. But I only have so much free time in the day, and in hand importing each spell for a Trumbunt demo is about as much free time as I have in a given day. All right, last but not least, we have Storm of Vengeance. This is very much a cleric spell if you've ever played D&D. Again, this is going to be two hand. Ah, I just wish I could. Maybe if I sprint, I can get ahead of these guys. I want to actually watch the skeletons die from this thing, not have my allies come in and clean everything up. All right, so this does eight fire, eight shock, and eight sun damage to everything in range for thirty seconds. Oh! <laughs> okay, I take it back. This is what a hollow spell should look like on D and D if you are a cleric. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. I love it. It's like a firestorm. Everything undead in this circle shall die. So it's fire, sun, and shock damage. And you, sir, have been chosen. Enjoy. At least try to. Wow, I brought in followers that are too tough. I shouldn't have spawned that extra follower early, uh, early in the demo. I should have waited, but... All right, that takes care of our destruction spells. Really liking that last one. It just looks so epic. I know 24 damage per round may not sound like much, but technically if Sun is doing double damage, that puts you up to 32, which is not bad. Not bad. Next we have, okay, so these ones, oh, some of these we're going to have to actually test in town. Oh, that'll be fun. All right, next we're going to test Exile. Exile targets up to level 15. Oh, wait, no, this is an illusion spell, so let's uh, do the demonstration first. All right, so for illusion spells, we're going to go for the Dawn Guard with Florentius Bionis, which again makes sense if you're familiar with the Dawn Guard plotline. Then we have Hamel and Markarth again. This is for Cleric's illusion spells. And then last but not least, Maramal and Riften. And yes, illusion in Riften makes total sense given the proclivities of the Thieves Guild. All right, so that's another one where you're going to be going quite the distance across Skyrim, multiple locations on your little pilgrimage to become a cleric, which actually fits a playthrough kind of perfectly, in my opinion, in my ever so humble opinion. All right, so we are going to skip suggestion for now so I can test that in town. We're going to jump straight to exile, which says target up to level 15 is hidden from the world 15 seconds. So we're going to grab one of these lucky participants and save them for later. Let's see. We use that on two. Ha! We can use it on two at the same time. Okay. So 15 seconds. Huh? So they should be popping up about the time that this Draugr. I bet he's higher than level 15. Oh, he's not. Wow. Okay. Oh, there you go. See. After 15 seconds, they come back for more. So this is a good starting uh, crowd control spell. It just kind of puts that one guy on timeout. It's a great way to, for example, oh, hi, okay, they don't come back to their immediate location. That's new. That's good to know. They, co they, they spawn in near their previous location. That, uh, that is an important thing to recognize because they could spawn in your face and then start immediately to kill you. So keep that in mind. Excellent. All right, so that was Exile. That's a great crowd control spell. Highly recommend it for cleaning up the squishies so that you can get to the boss without being distracted. Uh, next, there we go. Okay, so you've probably been wondering why I have this glowy friend over here that uh, is ignoring my orders just like my Khajiit friend and trying to save my life when things are trying to kill me. I'm going to recast real quick. 
Come on. There we go. All right, so this is your spirit guardian. Now, this is an, an uh, what's the phrase they use here? Manifest the idealized spirit of your race for 7,200 seconds. This is basically a medium length follower. So if we go over to my spirit guardian, we're looking at a 17 hour summon. This does not count as a summon. So for example, if I pop this out and then start raising skeletons or Atronox or Dramora, it'll work just fine. It kind of counts as an extra follower, even to the point where you can give it follower orders and equip it. So, I mean, if you're not sure you want a follower or if you don't like any of the vanilla ones or you want one that you can just resummon, uh, you can just use Spirit Guardian. Now, the nice thing about Spirit Guardian is, let's say I put all of my smithing gear, you know, all of my leather strap strips and my iron and all of my smithing stuff on this guy, and then his timer expires. Everything that's equipped to the Spirit Guardian will automatically be put back into your inventory. So you don't have the risk of losing anything with which you equip your Spirit Guardian. I mean, you could just use it as a glorified pack mule. That, that would also work too. At least, well, I mean, geez, the thing lasts 17 hours. I mean, if you need a pack mule for longer than that, just recast. It looks like when you cast it a second time, it actually, like, dismisses your follower, and then you can bring him back. Yeah, so it's per part I particularly like it for a holy paladin cleric playthrough, because, I mean, look at that. That's it's like an angel. Well, what cleric would not have an angel backing you up in combat? Makes total sense. Total sense. All right, that said, what do we got next? Uh, let's see, we've got Obedience. That's another one we'll test in town. And all right, last but not least for the combat spells, we are going to use Exodus. Actually, oh, no, actually, I think we might be able to get Obedience. We're gonna do Obedience first, because I think we could get that one to work against Skeletons if I can land the spell before my followers come in and mess stuff up. I keep thinking this is actually me being in danger and not a demo. Okay, doesn't work on undead. Creatures and people. Okay, my mistake. Obedience does not actually work on undead, so we're going to have to try something else. Ah, uh, mess. Exodus. All right, we'll test out Exodus. There we go. And a one. And a two. And... There we go. So Exodus, as you can see, this is the same color that we saw for, uh, oh wait, is that my Khajiit? <laughs> Did I just Exodus Inigo? Uh-oh, I think I may have just done that. So for Exodus, now that everyone is, you know, taking a breather, all nearby, that's all it says, all nearby, it doesn't specify creatures, followers, whatever, all nearby up to level 40, except your follower, are hidden from this world for 60 seconds. So think of the Exodus as your ultimate ripcord spell. Oh crap, I can't take this, there's too many. I didn't think there would be a trap behind the Draugr, behind the Dragon, behind the Dragon Priest, what do I do? The answer is you pull out Exodus and it vanishes everything. I don't know why it also banished my Fallower, I think it kind of counted my Spirit Guardian as my Fallower, but uh, all in all, I'd say this worked out fairly well, although now I'm going to have to deal with this Dramora, this uh, Daedra coming back soon. Ah, right on cue! How about that? I timed that perfectly. I don't even have a stopwatch. Wow, okay, kudos to Aura of Thorns. That one almost healed me enough to not have to worry about his little lightning cloak spell. Uh, okay, so that was Exodus. That just benches everyone, and I don't know if that counts as a combat spell or not, but we are going to hop over to Whiterun and uh, find out. What do you mean I haven't been to Whiterun yet? All oh, right, it's a demo character. Okay. All righty. Now, I should have... Let me check. I can't remember. I think I still have my Civil War mods, which means I have refugees to play with. All right. So we're also going to try out Exile. Uh, exile. Nope, not to Exile. Suggestion. There we go. I'm getting confused here. I'm, I'm getting out of order because some of these spells are not designed to use in combat. They're more designed for like our role play and NPC type exchanges. So, suggestion. Creatures and people up to level 10. Obey simple commands for 30 seconds, but not in combat. So, 
we uh, can initiate conversation. We don't really have a dialogue box, but we can tell him to get over there. Oh, wait, did that... Did that actually give him the option to attack Inigo? Oh, dear lord, did I... Can I do that? <laughs> I sicked him on Inigo! Oh, no! Oh, that... Okay, that's a whole new level of... Okay, I uh, when I first tested that out, I was just able to give the move order. I did not realize that you could also give the attack order, and I cannot actually move my character right now because the courier is trying to make up for the mass leveling that I did for this little demo. There, I'm done. Move, move, get out of my face. All right. Okay, so I assume that that little squishy guy is now dead because he just poked a giant Khajiit with glass armor and a really good bow. So I guess, uh, well, now we know we can do that. So I don't think this will work on like monsters when you're in combat. It specifically in the description says, but not in combat, but you can apparently compel NPCs to start combat, but it only works at level 15 or below. And for some reason, the refugees are above level 15. I don't know why. They must have gotten, must have been able to power level uh, on in order to get to the safety of Skyrim. Oh, is he not? Oh, he's not. Oh, wait, is that the courier? He levels the courier. Oh, the courier is not level 15. That is good to know. Wow. You can totally... Wait, can I make him, like, attack a guard? He can attack refugees and guards. Oh, no. Ooh, okay. So you can do some serious mind games here with your victim. And uh, so we have the wait option, the attack option. I'm not sure off the top of my head whether options will work. But if you want to... Wow, that's very dark for a cleric. It's very Jedi, too. Go wait over there. Go ignore me for now. Although I'm pretty sure the higher you get in your skill, in illusion, the higher the level. Yes. So in the description, this starts out being level uh, 10 or below. And I've increased my illusion to the point where it's level 24 or below. Wait, that means these refugees are over level 24. Jeez. This is the anti-dragon squad, if ever I saw one. Okay, well now we know why no dragons are attacking Whiterun. It's not because they're scared of the Jarls. It's because there's a bunch of level 24 refugees that are starving and hungry and a dragon would look tasty. Wow. Okay, so that said, let's see. I believe there was one other spell. Ah, yes, Obedience. Let's check that one out. Obedience. Creatures and people up to level 24 fight for you for 60 seconds and obey orders when not in combat. So I guess the first question is, does it work when you're not in combat? Oh, Hi. Oh, dude! Okay, so he's entered the combat stat, so he's already expecting to fight for me, at which point we can initiate trade. Wow, you could, like, recruit NPCs to fight for you as needed, like in town, and then immediately outfit them with awesome armor, have them help you in the fight, and then immediately disload them. <laughs> oh, wait, that works on... Okay. Okay. It works on multiples. It works on multiples. Thank you very much, Mr. Courier. Are you still here? No? Okay. I'm going to need to find someone to pick a fight with. Oh, wait. Someone to pick a fight with. Go get him. Go get him, boys. <laughs> oh, oh, geez. Oh, oh. Oh, well, that was very... Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So that, that was a, a uh, religion part mod thing. Oh, jeez, that's a lot of red dots. Okay, so apparently I have now formed a militia <laughs> that is bound to my will. This is kind of dark for a cleric. I mean, I assume this works on, like, bandits and stuff, so I guess you can kind of compel an evil person to back you up in a fight? I don't know. <laughs> Compelling normal NPCs to fight for you. Oh, wow, that's funny. I want to see what's happening with all these other red dots. Did my one right white run guard go up and try and like take everybody on? I'm being shot at from the battlements, so all right. Well, you know what? In for a penny, in for a pound, right? Come on, everybody, let's go! Woo! We've got a new civil war to go in Skyrim. That's right. My illusion powers are strong. Where are these guards that wish to give me battle? It's this one priest thinks she can get away from being drafted into my army. It is not going to happen. <laughs> oh wow 
Okay. So, oh wait, oh geez, oh we're losing. I'm all oh, right, my mistake. We're we're actually losing this fight. We're gonna have to uh, do some quick recruiting here. Oh, this guy's getting uncomfortably close, and I am out of magic. Okay, we're gonna have to finish you off the old-fashioned way, sir. <laughs> now notice, my bounty is only going up when I do the killing. So technically, all of this is being blamed on other people and not me. <laughs> A strange malady has settled in the town and forced everyone to kill each other. And of course, you know, we've got to, uh, there's one other way to solve this problem. Three, two, one. Goodbye. Oh, geez. That only worked on my follower. Okay, so apparently that works on, like, regular bad guys, not, not NPCs that are sworn to the protection of the city. Wait, it worked on something. I'm not even sure what got sucked in, because one of the guards is here. Maybe it was one of the guards that was still under my sway. At least my follower stayed this time. That helps. Jeez. Okay, that's that's pretty intense. I did not find any of these crazy combinations when I was initially testing this mod. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in trouble now. No, 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 no. Leave me alone. This is this is a demo. Come on. Don't take this personally. This is for the fans. It'll be fine. I'll flip a switch and every, everyone's going to be good. It'll be it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Now I just need to find some cool dramatic lighting for my little end screen. All right. So, thank you for joining me on my slightly more homicidal playthrough than than I expected. <laughs> Uh, as you can see, lots of options for the cleric, whether you want to manipulate the minds of your opponents, uh, nuke every undead thing with sun damage, or use some very interesting uh, enhancement like buff spells that have multiple effects over one casting. I'm going to have to wrap this up real quick because the guards are on their way. Uh, if you liked the video, feel free to give it a like. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments below what was your favorite cleric spell. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Take care.